Hi, welcome back to the shed. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to make this work, um, so I'm pretty happy right now. In this video, I'm going to cover how I installed a 3.5mm headphone jack into my Game Boy Advance SP. So you'll remember my last video where I did my ultimate Game Boy Advance and put the IPS screen in this lovely shell. I've just made it more ultimate. We've added an audio out on there as well. Um, I can't take credit for coming up with this mod. I saw a video by The Retro Future, which I'll link on the description, and he in turn saw a video from someone called Mako, um, who investigated putting the headphone socket in the top part. Retro Future did it in this section here. I used one of the IPS screens, which frees up a little bit of space, tiny bit of space, which left just about enough room with some careful cutting and gluing to fit an audio socket in the side there. So in the video, I'll roughly go through the process and then I'll show it in action, but it's dead good. Stay with it. All right, so looking to fit this little tiny headphone jack inside, uh, we're gonna start by looking at the top. So we'll open up that top half. But the theory is that should fit there and the lid, I think with a bit of trimming, should fit but what i'm going to do rather than cut the hole there first i'm going to just try and remove the insides to see if the theory is right that this will sit in place because if it doesn't <laughs> it's no good but if i try it and it fits i can then open up the hole for the socket if it doesn't fit i can close it all up and it won't be obvious so i think that's what i'm going to do Now that took a while, um, I really took my time with it, but I've removed those little bits here, uh, partly with the cutters, um, just to nip in here and there, um, but mostly with the scalpel, just very carefully shaving off tiny layers at a time until I had that section removed. So if I look at that with the socket, that kind of sits flat. Now looking at this, it's actually got two tiny little bumps probably for locating it on like mobile phone uh, motherboards but that's causing it to have like a half a millimeter to a millimeter raise so I'm gonna have to cut those off so that's just flattened off those two bumps so that will sit in here like that clearance wise as I said before we may need to move some of the other bits, but I've just got to see if that fits. First check, see if that will go together. I've not quite got the clearance there because of the screw post. Now the points where I'm going to solder are sticking up. It also feels like it's tilting over very slightly there. So I think what I'll need to do is remove a tiny little bit of the plastic shielding as well. All I've done there is use the needle file just to flatten off that area there so that it comes level with the rest of the screen cover. So that when this sits in place, where it was tilting that way slightly before now it sits pretty much flat might need to take a tiny bit more off but that's largely flat there next we've got the issue with this point mainly and the screw posts so I'm going to investigate that instead of soldering into these little legs that stick out I'm going to cut some of them off to give me the clearance for uh, the screw post and so on and solder to these little recesses so I'll be able to get the wire flush with the edge. This is actually going to be further over so it'll be these two that I'll need to cut off and remove. So I've cut off and filed down those two points so they don't stick out so now we'll be able to test if it actually will fit in place so just to recap I've removed these two points I've got that there screens in place that should fit just up against the edge of the screen and then the lid might 
fit on. Now the issue is probably going to be with this screw post here if it's still catching. Now I can see when I try and put it on, it won't quite line up, it's slightly over to the side. Um, but I'm quite optimistic about this. I think all I'm going to need to do is cut back a little bit along here, which I'll be able to do with the knife on this part and the needle file just up to the edge of the screw post. But if you look, there's a good millimeter and a half there that I can afford to remove and the screw will still go in. So I'll still be able to screw it in, but we might have clearance for this audio jack. Let's see. So what I ended up doing there was I started with the file, but it was a bit awkward and then I started just slicing little bits off with the knife and that was working quite well. So you can see now, although the screw post is still there, what I've done is I've flattened off this edge. Right, so this is part one of my theory. So it closes up all the way around there. I have not removed the screw post. So when I put it back together, I will be able to fit the screw in to all the different parts. So next is a case of cutting these parts of the shell so that I get the circle. And I am gonna essentially use the needle file and just trim it as neatly as I can. And I'm gonna really take my time so that it works. So here is where I am up to. Um, I've cut out a section on the side here, uh, which largely fits that section quite neatly. Uh, there's a tiny little bit I want to get out there to make it more circular, but I think I'll do that once I've done the other half, because of course now, I've got this top half that I'll need to cut a little section out of so that it all fits flush. So that's my next job, just to remove a little scoop from here. So not far off now. Great, so here's where I'm up to. On here, I have just trimmed that bit there of the flat edge of the screw post so it fits in. I've, I've cut out the rounded area here and my socket has been trimmed down there and there. So that will fit here, like that. And then the lid has also been trimmed with the curve out here and all this section removed and I've filed off the edge of the screw post. So that fits directly on top. What I've got to do next is route my wires, but also what I'm going to end up doing is putting a spot of hot glue here, just at the sides and round there. I'm going to try and avoid too much at the back there because that's where if we're plugging in like that, Although it doesn't come all the way out, it does come up to the end. So I don't want glue going in there and preventing that from, from pushing in place. So that's next. Okay, so here we are. I've added the wires and I've put a little bit of hot glue to put it in position. Tiny bit of hot glue on the screen as well, just to keep it in place. I'm going to reroute my wires and then get those ready for feeding through this point where I'll do the rest of the soldering on the inside just to stop anything from moving about. Although the foam was causing a lot of pressure before, I've added just a little square in the center just to keep that pressure on, and keep it in position without it bulging too much at the edges. So now I've got to try and route these wires carefully, put the back of this on and start work from the other side. Right, so I've removed the back of the unit so I could lift out the motherboard slightly and get to the, let's just move that get to the screw here that allows me to lift off the cap that goes over here, which meant I can then take all my wires, loop them around, feed them through here and through the little slot where the ribbon goes. So what I'm going to do now is just try and tidy up all that wiring and 
put the cap back on and then carefully get this lid in place. Once I've done that, then I'm going to start with the soldering on the motherboard itself. I think one step at a time is probably prudent. Right, so I've got my wires all routed across, looped through, making sure they are clear of this space here so they're within the gap that was meant for the original ribbon. And now before I do anything else, I'm going to put the lid in place and hopefully that will just sit fine. But usually that sort of thing's not the case, so let's see. I suspect I might have issues from this red and black wire that I've, I've rooted there. Yeah, that's not wanting to go in place. I don't want to force it. So I think I'll take a little bit more off here. All right, I've removed a bit more from that post, so I am really hoping this is going to fit now. That seems better. That all fits. Get those screws in. So that first stage is what I might call a success. I've managed to screw it all back together. Everything fits flush around the edge and we've got our socket there. Um, I might just, to be safe, um, try out with a cable. It plugs in fine back out right we should be okay so next I can close this lid and start to look at where I need to solder these wires in place to get this to work also I need to reposition the mess that I've made here with my buttons and speaker and all the rest of it what you can see is I've routed my wires through the same point where the ribbon comes through and I've got the left and the right and the sort of cut off ground connected up here um, where I've got the L out I've got my blue wire where I've got the R out there I've got my red wire and the other one is the top edge of the capacitor marked C25 and I've got the wire going to the sort of single point on the edge of the audio socket so I've got one wire left that's going to go on the other side of the board so my next job now is to just carefully route those wires. I'm aiming to try and sort of feed them around here, looping them around there, and then to this sort of safe point where they are. So <laughs> wish me luck. So I've managed to do that fairly easily, actually. I just routed the cables along the plastic area with it upside down like this. And looking through the gap and using a spudger to push things out of the way, lowered the motherboard in place. So that seems to be all sitting flat. And I've got one wire left, this one creeping out here. I've deliberately done it at this corner because it's going to attach onto this socket here. So I'm going to do that next. Just so you can see, that's my last wire that's routed through and that connects to my audio ground there. I just plugged the game in, attached the battery, just kind of held it in place and tried it with and without the cable in. It worked with the headphones, left and right channel coming through fine, and also the speaker cut out when it was plugged in and came back on when it was off. So, time to put it all back together. And there you go, it worked, <laughs> much to my surprise. Um, so, quick demonstration and then I'll let you go. Uh, with that on, obviously the audio coming out from the speaker usually. Uh, the way this is wired up means that if I plug in the headphones, you can hear the sound coming out of that there. Plug in. That's redirected to my headphones. Both channels, really good. Really loud as well, actually. Got the music playing there. It's coming out of my headphones at the moment. And then redirected to the speaker there. We're on. Sound from the speaker. And back to my headphones. It's brilliant. And I'm also really pleased with how neatly it's turned out as well. Um, it was really, really tricky. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've just been here for like three and a half hours. Three and a half hours putting a little hole on the side of my Game Boy. <laughs> but I'm one of those masochists who enjoys that sort of thing. I really had a good time doing that mod, trying to fit it in. It's not perfect. It was difficult to get that circle right. So although it isn't perfect by my standards, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, 
I am done. So unless another crazy mod comes along and I have to have a go at doing that, I have definitely got my ultimate Game Boy Advance SP now. Super Famicom shell, headphone jack, IPS screen. Oh, so good. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more nonsense like this and I'll see you next time. Bye.